how is it going everyone welcome to my channel i am dutch and this is gonna be one of the most important video i have ever created till date because the topic on which i am gonna talk about needs lots of courage and strength to call a spade a spade yes today i am gonna talk about principles practices and the myth of best practices now by the end of this video i am damn sure that i will be able to convince all of you that whatever i am saying makes some sense okay so hang out till the end and hang out till the end before writing any comment and after that please do write your comment and let me know how did you like it what are your opinion on the same now to make my case bit stronger let me start with quoting some books and the first book which i am quoting is this organization of science and technology at the water said and there is one line written in this particular book which says that you know you can see it in red there is no best practices you know they are talking in terms of r&d it says that for r&d it's that there is no best practices since the use of tools depends on the specific context and situation of the enterprise so there could be a best practice but it is totally dependent upon the specific context and situation of the enterprise let me remind you that the books which i am quoting are not new now let me quote another book the book is managing the design factory a product developers toolkit by donald g reneston after many years of working in product development i have concluded that the idea of best practices is a seductive but dangerous trap is a seductive but dangerous trap best practices are only best in certain context and to achieve certain objectives a change in either the context or the objective can quickly transform the best practice into a stupid approach so at least the author is very clear over here now i believe i have given you enough indication that whatever i am going to talk about is not a bs okay so let me come to my statement here is my statement about best practices i say that there is nothing known as best practices all known practices are decent practices which may or may not work and can be improved upon okay so there is nothing known as best practices we should stop using this term as best practices we can at max use decent practices or recommended practices now after that i am going to make one more statement but that statement will be a bit harsh and the statement is this one enforcing best practices is akin to colonization of innovation creativity and idea of continuous improvement yes that is correct if somebody is enforcing a best practices to you it is equivalent to colonization of your innovation creativity and ideas of continuous improvement now i will prove my point with very generic examples so hang out for a moment okay now before we go ahead let's understand what is the meaning of principles and practices both are not same though some people may confuse it too but both are totally different thing principles so i have taken this uh, from a dictionary you know it's a dictionary explanation of what is the meaning of term principles principles is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as a foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning all of you understood that while practices is the actual application or use of an idea belief or method okay so this is the dictionary meaning of principles and practices and in reality it is not different from what the dictionary meaning says let's see it in a different perspective principles can be considered as a fundamental truth that can be universal a fundamental truth that can be universal okay principle can be same but practices can't be universal for example let's talk about a common principle which many people across the world have the principle states that you know i will serve people in need i will help people in need but what are the practices they do some people can write a check or transfer money to the bank account some people will go 
and help them using their physical labor okay so that's the difference between practices but the principle is same the same principle is being achieved now let's talk about a very generic example this is the first example i am giving there is a universal principle that we should respect our parents and elders okay that's the universal principle all across the world that our parents and elders should be respected but what are the practices for the same the practices can be different in some part of the world you know people dedicate one day of the year or couple of days of the year to you know give respect to their parents or elders in the house right in some other parts of the world people start their day by giving respect to their parents and elders and taking their blessing you know so the principle remains same that you know you have to give respect to your parents and elders but the you know practices are different based on different cultures but if the question comes which one is the best practice okay how will you react to this particular question you know there is no best practice over here one practice works in a part of the world another practice works in another part of the world and both are actually achieving the same thing because their culture is different the way people think that respect has to be paid is different we can go back to the references of the books which i have just shown in the beginning of this particular video that you know it will break apart if the context and objectives are different okay now let me give you one more example okay there is a universal principle about guerrilla warfare all of us know what is a guerrilla warfare right so guerrilla warfare is a principle but what about practices let's take a example of this particular movie 300 i hope most of you might have seen or know about this movie if not you may have to go and do wikipedia but the crux of this movie is that you know 300 odd people registered a million strong army okay and they were in the verge of victory now the practices depicted in this particular film its best practices but only at the terrain where the war is actually taken place okay you cannot use the same practices and put 300 people in front of a million strong army in a plain area or in a plain ground okay if you do this considering this as a best practice you will end up killing your 300 people without doing even an iota of impact to the million strong army they will crush you right but this was the best practices for that particular terrain but whether this will be applicable to you or not it's a totally different case altogether so that's why i am saying best practices need context and objectives okay now let's talk about something which actually impacts and comes into the discussions all the time whenever we talk about lean or agile software development and that subject is Toyota production system okay most of the things in lean and agile world is derived from Toyota production system and it's a case study for all over the world but if you want to know the crux of Toyota production system so listen to this statement this is not quote unquote this is the crux of the statement the Toyota production system says that no matter how good some practices is it can always be improved and people doing the job are the best people to figure it out okay so they are of the opinion that you know you are doing something which is considered as a best practice today but this can also be improved and the people who are actually doing things are the best people best set of people to improve those practices okay now in software development the idea of selling best practices especially while you are doing the code it's rampant all over the world you know all over the places for all programming languages let me tell you my own story about one specific topic called design patterns so it was in late 1990s and i was extremely young at that point of time and i was learning c c++ i did all the things i was very enthusiastic to learn these things and i came across this thing called design patterns and you know design pattern the idea of design pattern ruled the world for quite number of years you know it was a mandatory interview question for any software job 
or even 99% of the software job. If you are going for programming, you need to know design patterns. Okay, it was such a big thing. But in my opinion, and I am telling you based on my own experience and based on the code bases which I have looked into, which runs into millions of lines of code, it was a big failure. Design patterns was too complicated and rigid and was being sold as design patterns so that people will end up using it. Creational pattern, behavior pattern, factory pattern, you know, adapter pattern. All those complex and rigid things were created with complicated class hierarchies and, you know, there were problems in implementation if you ever want to tweak this for your own purpose, okay? So, it turns out that most of the time people end up creating uh, these patterns or using these patterns unnecessarily and they end up getting into lots and lots of problems because this enforces a practice in such a detailed level where it disregards the problems you were facing or the problems you were trying to solve. Some people may disagree with it but let me tell you that other than singleton pattern which is a bit simpler pattern None of the design patterns were coded as it was intended to be coded. People did lots of things, lots of manipulations and they later on say, okay, you know, this is a factory pattern. This is this pattern. We are using design patterns. It, it became a high life thing in software world when you utter the word, you know, design patterns and people will start giving salute to you, you know, you know, design patterns. And pretty much it was hilarious to me because I knew the reality and I'm guilty of not saying no to this because I was not in a position to do that most of the time. Okay. Now I am. So I'm clearly telling it without any fear or favor. Okay. Now there are some good practices like TDD, which means test driven development or the crux of this practice is test first. Now, as we learned from the Toyota production system, it says that, you know what, no matter how good thing is, you can improve. It hurts me because I teach TDD to multiple people and it hurts me when people just somehow grasp TDD and stop there. They don't think about improving TDD. There are various ways to improve the TDD itself. For example, think about this thing. You know, TDD is test first, right? So it is red, green refactor. You know, write the failing code first, then the production code, then the refactoring, right? But you know what? When you are doing TDD and when you end up creating a mock, you can include a practice saying that you will go to a central repository place and tell that, you know, you are mocking this behavior so that a product which is being developed or which is under development can verify that, you know, the behavior which you are expecting is the correct behavior that is going to come. So the improvement in TDD will be that as soon as you create a mock, you put it in one particular place so that everybody knows what is the behavior you are expecting and you are coding your code to. That's the improvement in TDD. This is what we should think all the time. That is what is meant by continuous improvement. So the overall crux of this thing is that, you know, let's not fall into false dichotomy. Now, no discussion on best practices and processes stop without mentioning something called agile software development. And I'm damn sure that all of you are aware of it. Now, while talking about this, there might be some thought that came to your mind saying that, you know, agile software development is also considered as best practices. So if this thought comes to your mind, you are incorrect because agile is not about practices. It is all about set of values and principles. Agile software development is not a set of practices or best practices. You can come up with any practice which help you to achieve these set of values and principles. You are having Agile in your organization. Got it? Agile is not about practice. Agile is all about values and principles. How you are going to achieve those. Let's talk about Scrum. Again, Scrum is not a practice. Scrum is a framework. This framework helps you to bring in or bring out your inherent agility by giving you a simple framework with smaller teams and events so that you can use this to achieve these values and principles, okay? So the terms like, you know, user stories, estimations, they are not part of Scrum. We are bringing that into the Scrum 
framework okay scrum is a framework you can bring in whatever enhances your agility okay or whatever enhances your capability to achieve these values and principles okay so i will end with saying that let's get rid of the term called best practices instead we should use the term called recommended practices with condition applied you know that there are these set of objectives and context on which this practices work and since most of the software development seems to be doing these kind of activities so these are recommended practices so no best practices but recommended practices organization can have their own recommended practices but let's not stop there all recommended practices must be continuously improved as we have seen in twitter production system now you know since the software development activity happening all around the world will be keep on getting recommended practices in the name of best practices we should treat all of them with respect but what we should never do is that consider that as a universal growth okay with that i will end this video thanks a lot guys thanks for listening now you can comment and let me know what you think about this thanks a lot people thanks for watching till the next time we meet good day goodbye take care